Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix have formally issued their first release. Although looking at the website, uh, you could be confused into believing that. But I'm sure they'll get to the website eventually. For now, I have to download the project directly from SourceForge or downloading the ISO file from here. So I have to leave a link to this in the video description. But yeah, I'm gonna have to address the first and obvious point here. Why would you go for the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix instead of going for Linux Mint? Because Linux Mint use Cinnamon as their main choice of desktop. And I think the answer has to do with the choice of applications. Yes, we have some of the Cinnamon specific applications here, but overall you're more closely linked to the Ubuntu applications. You don't have anything else that Mint have done on their own unique applications. And I also have to say that the styling is more reminiscent of Ubuntu. You've got a lot of the orange and black here. So yeah, I would say this uh, definitely more closely matches Ubuntu than Linux Mint does. Not that Mint are even trying to do that because I think Mint are trying to get as far away from being Ubuntu as possible. So nice choice of wallpaper here. That's uh, just a slightly different version of uh, the Aonamine than you would get with the standard release. And then you have Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix in the corner, which I realized you won't be able to see it at the moment. Not until I do that and hide myself. So yeah, let's uh, keep me away for the rest of the video and focus on the operating system. So starting with the memory usage, 870 this time. Well, uh, earlier it was uh, 790 when I when I checked this. So yeah, okay, it fluctuates a bit, but uh, as with GNOME and Cinnamon, they're not exactly lightweight desktops, not compared to the likes of KDE, XFCE, LXQt. Yeah, it's not exactly uh, resource intensive. It'll drop down in a moment. Yep. Yeah, so they are highest. Usage here is the Cinnamon desktop at 3% CPU. Now, some of that could be to do with the fact I am using it in VirtualBox. I'm just gonna point that out here because I believe the uh, full system install will have a lot more effects and would actually be using the graphics card for rendering. So yeah, that would reduce the CPU somewhat. But anyway, my focus was more the styling, the look and feel, how they've done with the system, not on its overall performance, because to be honest, I was actually a bit unsure of as to whether they were at formal release. So let's take a look at something. So this is the Cinnamon Launcher. You can find via text or scrolling around different sections. We have Nemo for the file manager instead of Nautilus or Files, whatever name GNOME are going with these days. Icon theme looks quite nice there. Going across into a folder, you can see we've got some thumbnails here. Uh, it has eventually produced all the thumbnails. It was missing one of them. That, that one there was a bit larger file, hmm, two meg. So I don't know why it wouldn't generate that thumbnail immediately, but yeah, it's got there in the end. Uh, I don't have any videos loaded, but yeah, music files. Uh, come on, Alasco album. Yeah, it's a little slow at producing the thumbnails. Anyway, that's just a kind of a minor issue really, because once you've used the system, once you've navigated around all your areas of your hard drive, yeah, it's just gonna appear there as normal. So GTK applications certainly look quite nice and yeah, the theming does look good. Happy with all those. Although let's deviate slightly. Let, let's, uh, let's look at something else. Let's just go for something common like LibreOffice. About LibreOffice. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, not, not so good here really. De definitely not so good at all. <laughs> uh, I think they need to solve the uh, all round themings. And okay, I'm gonna stretch it a little bit here. We'll go for a cute application, Kate. Um, I know what the answer is going to be, and well, you get the same issue in GNOME, really, the cute styling. But honestly, I'm surprised that LibreOffice looked so bad. Kadian Live, that's going to be the same thing with Kate. Yeah, the, the, it's a cute application. The theme's going to just be completely different. I, I know there's ways of fixing this, but I've always argued that these things should be done out of the box, and that's it. I, I'm, I'm a lazy user. Do everything for me. That, that's what I'm after. Opening a snap-based application, and of course this is a point you do have on here that uh, with Ubuntu and other canonical distros, they do favor snaps. Uh, Linux Mint just do the opposite, of course. So yeah, we're, I've gone for a snap here, the snap of Inkscape, and <laughs> same old problem everywhere else, isn't it? <laughs> it looks awful. I meant to check the mouse cursor. How does that look compared to uh, their own? Okay, so there's no difference in the mouse cursor. That's a plus. 
That is an age-old issue of snaps, that the theming just generally looks appalling, and not just in Cinnamon, but in pretty much every desktop with uh, Ubuntu. The software installer looks like the GNOME version, because you have uh, yeah, the different uh, application title bars. Why do GNOME vary the title bar sizes so much? That's not the only one. You also have the same issue with GFUM. So yeah, kind of everything shoved up in the uh, application title bar there. That just kind of ruins the aesthetics for me. I don't know, functionality, things there, but uh, I suppose it depends what you get used to. And this is how GNOME do it, not on their desktop. So people must like it. They do use it. The choice of wallpapers is quite extensive. There's uh, quite a few different variants included. So there's plenty of options to choose from, or you can put on whatever you want. I'll have a look at some of the unique features of the Cinnamon desktop, so you can customize it by adding a desk lit, so like widgets. You can download more of them, and I see the numbers have been growing. I suppose that does help with the popularity of Linux Mint, people using it, uh, developing more widgets or desk lits that they want for the desktop. Yeah, quite a choice now. There's loads more options in the system settings, which kind of gives you a nice shortcut to uh, the other settings that are available. Yeah, just open up system settings and let's go for say themings. Oh, that's the icon set they've chosen, Kimo Dark. There's more themes available, which are quite a lot actually by the look of it. Oh, Windows 10 Basic. Yeah, no, no thanks, uh, pass on that. There's some different effects you can add and other extensions. Yeah, lots of different customizations you can make to the desktop, or you could ignore all that and leave it as is. It was perfectly usable without doing anything else to it. So how are we doing on memory usage? Well, it's crept up to one gig. Not too bad at all, really. So this has been quite an interesting remix to try out. I do like the theming that they've done on the Cinnamon and Gnome applications. Shame it's not complete everywhere, but yeah, it does look like a nice Ubuntu theme. It's very much what I've associated them with, with the orange and the black or the dark color. They've definitely gone away from what Linux Mint is, and yeah, that's perfect. Memory usage was a little bit high to start with, but it didn't creep up too much overall while using the system. So yeah, I have to say, really the only downside for me is the theming, and uh, I did notice one other little bug that I had, and that if you start off without a network connection on the installer and then subsequently put the network connection in, it just seemed to get stuck. So I don't know what's going on there. But with the network connection running, yeah, the system's been working fine. So that was a look at the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.